Live from Fargo and serving you on TV, online, and on the go. This is Valley News Live at 6. A student was taken away by sheriff's deputies this afternoon from the elementary school in Horace. The original call was about an unruly student in the classroom. Good evening, everyone. Thanks for joining us tonight. Stephanie is off. The West Fargo School District says it was an isolated disturbance caused by the student, and there was no danger to other students or teachers. Today's disruption follows recent student-on-teacher assaults in the Twin Cities. Yesterday in Ramsey County, a 13-year-old student in St. Paul punched a teacher in the face. Last week, a 17-year-old assaulted a high school teacher that was trying to break up a fight. That teacher suffered a traumatic brain injury and was choked unconscious. Valley News Team's Ashley Bishop today asked those studying to be educators if they ever thought that teacher assaults and violence would be part of the job. You never know what will happen in class. I guess I knew that it could happen. I didn't really expect it to happen ever. These education majors dream of teaching and inspiring students, but hearing that they may face uncontrollable or unruly students is worrisome. It's shocking and it's scary at the same time, but um, that incident wouldn't stop me from being a teacher. We do know that things like this do happen, um, especially students who have experienced trauma have a tendency to become triggered more easily. Abigail Bremer is a former public school teacher. She says she is sad to hear of the recent assaults on educators. I think that those students themselves were, they were good people who were making poor choices based on negative environments. Barbara says she feels teachers can reduce violence by making students feel powerful so they can advocate for themselves. Some education students feel that times have changed and that also means classroom etiquette. I feel like the respect has just kind of like went down like it used to be you would never talk back to your teachers, you would never talk out of turn, but now it's just kind of like they kind of do what they want. In Moorhead, Ashley Bishop, Valley News Live. We reached out to Moorhead, Fargo, and West Fargo school districts to get reaction from teachers in the classroom. All three districts said they didn't have teachers available. West Fargo says they don't see teacher assaults an issue in the metro. Fargo says if a student assaults a teacher, they would face disciplinary action and that their staff works to monitor behavior of any concern. An arrest warrant's been issued for a man wanted for starting a fire at the Juba Coffee House and Restaurant in Grand Forks. Police are looking for 25-year-old Matthew Gust of East Grand Forks. His current whereabouts are unknown. Anyone with information on Gust's location is encouraged to contact the Grand Forks Police Department. Now, investigators released surveillance video showing a man breaking a window at the coffee shop. The fire caused about $90,000 in damages. Law enforcement is looking at this as a possible hate crime. Days earlier, Nazi symbols were found painted on the restaurant's exterior along with the words, go home. Authorities say that they haven't yet determined whether the incidents were connected. A group of Cass County law enforcement officers observed a prayer service and held a meeting today at the Islamic Center in Fargo. They say it was an outreach effort to the Muslim community, making sure their concerns are being addressed and making sure that they do not become targets of hate. West Fargo Police Chief Mike Wrighton says that they also wanted to make sure the Muslim community knows that they are supported by local law enforcement. There's something new in the weather tonight. Actually, someone new. I'd like to welcome meteorologist Justin Fanfarelli to the Valley News Live team. Justin comes to us after working in Idaho. I also worked in Rapid City. So you definitely know what our weather's like. So how about tonight? What's the weather, Justice? And thank you, Mike. Good evening, everybody. Well, we had some snow showers in the Fargo area for today. Didn't amount to much, but as we take a look at the radar, as we make our way up I-29, especially toward Grand Forks, and as we go uh, points east and west, we do have uh, bands of snow moving through, and that is going to be the story as we go through the uh, the night tonight. Uh, snowfall potential looks like this. From Fargo points south, not a lot here, but as we make way further north on halfway to Grand Forks, zero to one inches in Grand Forks, and especially off to the west, one to three inches from this system and in the Fargo area. Temperatures staying into the lower 30s for tonight, maybe a stray snow shower, but it should be quiet. We're tracking uh, another couple of systems moving through that could give us some snow uh, for the end of the weekend and for midweek next week, and I'll tell you about that coming up later in the newscast. Usually something's happening around here. Yeah, man, yeah, I think that's what we want, especially the snow lovers. All right, and welcome again. Hey, thank you. Court records say that Rose Downwind died after being pushed down the stairs by her boyfriend, Marcello Simrusti. 
Downwood had been missing since mid-October until her body was recovered from a shallow grave this week near Bemidji. Simmerusty was charged today with second-degree murder while uh, under a restraining order. And another man, Brandon Rossbach, was charged with aiding an offender. Investigators say that he helped dispose of Downwind's body. And a warrant has been issued for the arrest of Christopher Davis. He has also been charged with aiding an offender. Now, authorities say Sim Rusty said that he got into an argument with Downwind and pushed her down the basement stairs. He says Downwind was bleeding from her mouth and didn't have a pulse. Just after she went missing, her mother Georgia told Valley News Live she was concerned about Sim Rusty. You have concerns about the ex-boyfriend on Stoner Avenue? Correct. Okay. Yes, that's the one. Simarusti told police he insisted, uh, enlisted the help of Rossbach and Davis to move Downwind's body to the vehicle, along with bags of styrofoam and a tank of gas. Simarusti and Rossbach both remain in jail. Christopher Davis has not yet been arrested. Investigators say that Nerf Wars was the cause of a crash that killed two Lakeville, Minnesota students and injured two others last week. The game started at the school and continued later on, according to investigators. Several Nerf guns were recovered at the scene. Only one of the four occupants in the truck was wearing a seatbelt at the time of the crash. Investigators also say they found no evidence that any of the passengers in the bed of the pickup truck when the accident happened. Police are not calling the accident a distracted driving incident at this time because they haven't been able to talk with 17-year-old who was driving at the time. He's still listed in critical condition. A Bagley, Minnesota man with a long history of domestic abuse is back behind bars tonight. Robert Oliver is accused of attacking a woman in her Erskine, Minnesota apartment. Court records say that Oliver has had children with the victim. He's currently in the Polk County Jail charged with felony, domestic assault, and domestic assault by strangulation. He was already convicted of three other domestic assault charges in 2012 and 2013. It's Friday. Of course, it's time to take a look at this week's Valley's Most Wanted, Nathaniel Fairbanks' Gray Eagle. There you see his picture on the screen. He's wanted for felony terrorizing. Call your local law enforcement agency if you have any information on his whereabouts. The North Dakota Board of Animal Health lifted a ban that halted bird movement to shows, exhibits, and public sales within the state of North Dakota. The ban was put into place in April to help protect North Dakota's poultry industry during the nationwide outbreak of avian influenza. Although the ban is lifted, the state's veterinarian reminds bird owners to immediately report unusual death loss to their local and state veterinarian. Nationally, the outbreak affected over 48 million birds in 15 states. A number of off-duty and volunteer firefighters rang bells today to raise money for the Salvation Army. The firefighters are competing against FM Realtors and off-duty law enforcement to see which group can raise the most money on their day of ringing. All of the funds raised during this challenge will go toward the Red Kettle campaign. Habitat for Humanity will benefit from Saturday's recycled art show and silent auction that will be held at Dakota Medical Foundation. Artists were given $50 gift cards to purchase items from ReStore, which a building supply thrift store in Moorhead that benefits Habitat for Humanity. The recycled goods were turned into art that will be put on the silent auction. Now, tickets are still available. You can also get them at the door. Tomorrow, they will cost you $25 each. The event is scheduled from 5 in the afternoon until 7 o'clock. And remember to like Valley News Live on Facebook. You can follow the latest news, weather, and breaking news updates anytime on your feed. Just search Valley News Live, like our page, and you'll stay informed throughout the entire day. Later on Valley News Live at 6, tonight's hero is a 9-year-old boy who got his wish today. Find out what it was. And we're not going to see heavy snow in the Fargo area tonight. That's not the case in other areas. We'll give, tell you where next.